Welcome back, Ohio. and it's not cold. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to the vlog. In today's video, we're diving into the unique and sometimes surprising rules and customs here in Japan. Now, if you are planning on visiting Japan, or you're just curious, these are some things that are going to help navigate your way or journey here. So I hope you enjoy it. If this is your first time watching and you do enjoy this, please consider subscribing below and leave me a comment on where you're from because I always want to know where you are from. And if you have been here before, welcome back legends. It's always great to hear from you and I've absolutely as always, love chatting to you in the comments below. Please drop me a comment below if you're a return viewer because I want to know more about you. And remember, drop your name on it because I want to reference you by name. Anyway, guys, let's jump straight into this one before I absolutely melt away. Let's go. Number one, no tipping. Did you know that in Japan, tipping is actually considered rude? Unlike in many other countries, tipping can be seen as a sign of disrespect. So be sure not to tip. I remember the first time that I did a tip accidentally in a restaurant and I had the waiter actually run down the street and give me the money back. It's just part of the culture and excellent service is all included in the price. Number two, gift giving etiquette. Gift giving in Japan is a thoughtful and precise act. When giving or receiving a gift, make sure that you give or receive it with both hands giving and receiving. And the one thing to be aware of is that the wrapping of the gift is just as important as the gift itself. So if you are presenting a gift to someone, make sure that wrapping is on point. Number three, business card exchange. These guys right here. <laughs> <laughs> now, business cards are still widely used in Japan to pass across their details. In Australia, we tend to just exchange details with our mobile phones, but business cards are something here that are very precious to people, and I'm yet to get some myself. So if you do receive a business card, very important thing is to, like the gifts, give and receive it with two hands with a slight bow as a sign of respect. Analyze the business card, look at it both sides, but then also make sure that when you are putting it away, you're not just shoving it in your pocket or your bag, you're putting it neatly into your wallet as a sign of respect to the person giving you the card. Number four, proper use of chopsticks. Ah, there you go. These guys right here. This is often something that gets mistaken a lot by Westerners coming into here that don't know the proper use of chopsticks. Using chopsticks here is a big deal. It's very important for a couple of these points that I'm gonna give you to remember. When you are not using your chopstick, super important not to place them straight down into your rice um, as it's a sign for like funerals and stuff like that. Also, when you are using your chopsticks, <laughs> making sure that if you are passing food, from one person to another. You're not passing from someone else's chopsticks to your chopsticks and just taking it and eating it. You take food and you place it directly onto their plate and then they can pick it up from there. And same goes if you've got a share plate in the middle of the table that you're all sharing together is pick up the food, place it down on your plate and then pick it up and then eat it from there. Don't eat directly from the plate. These are some vital things. Like I can't stress enough when it comes to chopstick use here. So make sure you're doing the right thing, champion. <laughs> Number five, and it's getting hot already. <laughs> <laughs> no shoes indoors. Now it is very normal to take your shoes off when entering a person's home. It's not just normal, it's necessary. If you've seen my previous videos around my apartment tour, I'll link it above. You have a genkan at the front of a home when you enter and that's where you take your shoes off and place them there. Now, if you are going into a home or a business, more importantly, if you're going into a temple, using bare feet is just not on. So what I tend to do is always carry some socks in my bag so if you do run out you don't have socks on you no problems at all champion there's a convenience store in every single corner and you can get the most comfiest socks of your life there so yeah definitely do that damn it i've got to pick those up number six bathing etiquette don't be a dirty human <laughs> If you do plan on visiting an onsen here in Japan, it is super important to make sure that you bathe and shower off before going into the onsen. It's to keep the water of the onsen clean for the others that are there to use it with you. So definitely give onsen a go, but make sure you bathe all that dirty stuff off you. Number six leads us right into number seven. No tattoos in public baths and onsen. Now this is something that is widely talked about and I think we all are aware of this. Though one thing to know is that it's not every onsen that bans tattoos just because tattoos if you aren't aware are affiliated with the yakuza which is the japanese mafia um, but there are onsens around that do accept tattoos so do a little bit of hunting um, because onsens are well worth it just not in this weather because it is scorching mate i'm getting sweaty just thinking about a public bath right now <laughs> number 
8. Silence on public transport. If you have been to Japan before, you would know that if you've popped onto a train, it is basically the world's second library. That place is incredibly quiet. Do respect the quietness of the train, where it's a place for people just to relax, maybe in between them going to work or going home. I absolutely love the zen state of trains so be respectful of the trains and basically just do what everyone else is doing and don't make a sound i struggle sometimes with breathing on trains i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> number eight leads us right into number nine. Train station punctuality. Japanese trains are famously known for their punctuality. I can't say that word, I'm probably butchering it. It's just one of the words I can't say, right? <laughs> A fun fact about Japanese trains is that they're so on time that if a Japanese train is late by even one minute, you can go to the train station office at any of the train stations and they will give you a note to say that that train was late in case you need it because you got to, to work late. The name for that document is called Chien Shoumei. Again, probably butchering that one, but it's basically like a late slip from the train conductor at the station saying that your train was late by one minute. We apologize. That's freaking wild, man. That's how on time Japanese trains are. Number 10, no blowing your nose in public. I know, I know. I found this one a bit weird too. It's seen as a little bit rude to blow your nose in public. Generally, you need to blow your nose, maybe find a secret little area or go to pop to the bathroom, but hey, it is what it is, man. <laughs> maybe keep those tissues handy, hey? Number 11, no talking loudly in public. Okay. Now, just like on trains, people don't tend to speak quite loudly in public. So try and keep your volume to a low when speaking in public. It's basically just a way of keeping a peaceful atmosphere. And it's actually kind of nice. I, I kind of enjoy it. I don't tend to speak quite loudly when I'm out anyway, but it's just something that you'll naturally pick up here and you'll notice yourself being louder than others and naturally lower your voice, I think, anyway. so. Just be aware. Number 12, no talking on phones in elevators. Now I think this one's a pretty obvious one. I wouldn't do this back home in Australia anyway. I consider it quite rude, but if you do need to make a call or you're in the middle of a call, consider just not hopping on the elevator until you've finished your call um, or just don't take your call and answer it when you get off. Number 13, champion, <laughs> escalator etiquette. Now this is an interesting one that you'll notice if you do travel across Japan is that people will stand on different sides of the escalator depending on what city you're in. Realistically everyone tends to stand on the left side and wait to go up the escalator except for Osaka and I don't know how they did this. If someone knows let me know in the comment below but in Osaka they stand on the right side of the escalator and that's where they queue to go up the escalator. It's super strange and I don't know how they got mass society to adopt that, but it's just something to be aware of really. But the second part when using Escalade as well is that for safety, I think it must be to do with the mass population in these cities. People do not walk up the escalators. If you do, it's rare to see. Again, something to be mindful of, but honestly, if I'm in a rush, I'm gonna walk up those escalators. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God, it's getting so hot out here. <laughs> but we're gonna keep going, we're almost there. Number 14, queuing. One thing you'll notice being here is that everybody queues. So if you're waiting for things such as trains or buses, people will queue orderly and not break those queues up. And then when the doors open, they let the people off first and then nicely go into the train. This is one of my favorite things I love about this place. It's about respect and patience and I'm all for it. Always queue and be mindful. Again, just follow whatever and else is doing. <laughs> Number 15 and probably my favorite one so far. No jaywalking. Like I said it's probably my favorite one so far but also my least favorite one to follow. People here will wait for the little green man to say it's okay to cross the street and I'm saying even if the street is one meter wide and it's 1 a.m in the morning they will wait for that little green man to allow them to cross the road. It's really strange and I personally hate following it but I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Number 16, no eating while walking. Now this might be a surprise to some people, but it's seen as poor manners to eat while walking. People here tend to find a place to sit down and enjoy their meal and really savor what they're eating. So just be mindful that if you are buying some food, like we would in our countries, which I don't see a problem with personally, but eating and walking at the same time here is regarded as pretty rude and poor mannered. So be aware. Number 17, loud eating. Now this might be the same in your country as well. I think it's pretty standard, but avoid making loud eating noises, except and only except when eating noodles. So when eating noodles, feel free to absolutely slurp away. It's seen as a sign of respect to the chef that your noodles are 
Delicious. Number 18, watching movies in the cinemas. Watching movies in the cinemas here is a bit of a different experience. And what you'll find is once again, people are dead quiet. So even if it's a comedy, you won't find people having a cackle or having a mad laugh. They tend to stay dead silent for the respect of the others around them. Once again, it's just a super respectful society here. And the other thing that I found really interesting about going to the cinemas too, is that when the movie finishes and we usually bail out when the credits start rolling, they will wait right until the last credit before they leave the cinema. It's a sign of respect for the producers of the film. Yeah, again, that's just a fun little fact that I found pretty interesting. <laughs> Number 19, no PDA public displays of affection. Now, I don't know if this is so much of a rule, but you don't tend to see people kissing and hugging out in public. I don't know, it's a weird one, this one. I don't care, I will happily do it, show my affection to my partner. But when it kind of comes to this, you don't tend to see that much around. So maybe keep it to a minimal if you want to blend in a bit more, but also, yeah. <laughs> I can't stand it. I've got to get a drink. So just before we get to the last one, I'm getting myself a Vendo machine. I'm going to pick one that I've never chosen before. And it happens to be on sale because I'm hella budget right now. <laughs> Went with a sports drink because it's just way too hot out. Out of 10? Yeah, it's about a six. That's not fantastic. Maybe that's why I was on sale. <laughs> but this leads us on to number 20 throwing out trash. Now, if you have visited Japan before, you'd know that there are trash cans nowhere. The only places that I tend to find that I know where to go and find my rubbish bins at are by vending machines. They tend to have little trash cans or at convenience stores. But the one thing that I always keep handing on me in my backpack is a little plastic bag that I can put my trash in so I can take it home to later. So keep a plastic bag on ya because there's not many trash cans about. Trash bottle, trash box. Let's go. But guys, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for watching once again. I've absolutely loved doing this one, even though I've been battling the heat all day and I am scorching right now, so I'm feeling like an ice cream. <laughs> but thank you so much for sticking around, guys. If you did enjoy this, drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. But uh, until next time, guys, ciao mata, and I'll see you soon.